myself. Sumatran beans. And I also have to give credit to the grind. Thank you, Mr. Wayne. Walt, please, call me Walt. Huh. Why the hell are we making meth? We'll first start off with the chemical composition of coffee, specifically two alkaloids. We all know caffeine, and the second one is trigonaline. Coffee is the biggest dietary source of caffeine. Caffeine is an alkaloid, which means that it contains mostly nitrogen atoms. You can expect to get around 95 milligrams of caffeine from an average cup of coffee. However, this amount varies from different coffee drinks and can range from almost 0 to 500 milligrams. On one side of the slide, you can see a chart that shows a list of drinks and an estimate of how many milligrams on each. While 400 is a normal dose per day per person, too much coffee, such as anything higher than 500 milligrams a day, may cause side effects such as insomnia, nervousness, restlessness, irritability, upset stomach, fast heartbeat, and muscle tumors. While some positive effects of caffeine may be neurological conditions where caffeine is believed to help prevent or delay Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, an individual with too much caffeine may be at risk of overdose, which causes heart conditions and increases blood pressure. Basically, it tricks your brain into thinking that you're not tired. Caffeine, known to chemists as 1,3,7-trimethylxanthine, is actually similar in structure to naturally occurring molecules in our body called adenosines. Adenosine bonds to receptor cells in the brain, which in turn has a calming effect on the entire nervous system, and that makes you sleepy. What caffeine does is it blocks those receptors in the brain before adenosine can get in there and do its thing. Instead of calming the nerve cells, caffeine stimulates them, causing increases in the heart rate and the blood pressure, increasing alertness, and delaying the onset of fatigue. Trigonaline is the alkaloid that gives coffee its bitter taste. Although its concentration is slightly less than that of caffeine, it plays a significant role in the development of important flavor compounds during roasting. Recently, it has been found that drinking coffee may lower our incidence of dental cavities. Butter. Trigonaline gives coffee its sweet, earthy taste. And it also battles cavity-causing bacterium Streptococcus mutans, keeping the critters from attaching to your teeth. Coffee is known for its bitter taste, and this is because of its high concentration of a group of compounds called chlorogenic acid. Coffee beans have the highest concentration of chlorogenic acid out of any plant species. The prefix chloro refers to the green color produced when these acids are oxidized. The compounds found in brewed coffee are specifically chlorogenic acid lactones. Lactone meaning an organic compound with an ester group, which is two or more carbon atoms and a single oxygen atom as part of its ring. When coffee beans are roasted, chlorogenic acids are decomposed to form caffeic and quinic acids, which is responsible for the bitter taste. Recent studies have shown that adding salt can reduce the bitterness of coffee. This is also true for sugar and citric acid. Water temperature also plays a huge role in the taste of coffee because it alters the perception of the taste. For example, High water temperature, or the burning of coffee, increases the concentration of astringent compounds. At the same time, low water temperature inhibits the astringent compounds from being extracted. Keep in mind that bitterness and astringency are two different things. Bitterness refers to one of the five sensations of taste, whereas astringency refers to the feeling or sensation of harshness that accompanies the taste of coffee and tends to linger after drinking it. There are three main stages of compound extraction during the brewing process of coffee. The first stage is acidity, which refers to the sour or fruity components that are being released. 
And the second stage is sweet, meaning the earthy, caramel-like, kind of weak-tasting compounds that are extracted. The last stage is the bitter stage, and being the last and arguably least pleasant of the three stages, we notice its effects the most. The taste of coffee relies greatly on the success you have at extracting different compounds. For this reason, a brewing control chart, as shown in the right, can be used to track the different flavors that brewed coffee may have based on the three stages. The success of compound extraction can be measured based on what is known as the extraction yield, also known as the solubles yield, which is the percentage of coffee grounds that are dissolved in the brewing process. Ideally, this percentage will be around 18 to 22 percent. It is important for the yield to stay in this range because anything more or less can lead to a completely different taste of the coffee. If the coffee is under extracted, then the coffee doesn't get the chance to reap the final stages of brewing, which is sweetness and bitterness. And this leads to a sour and unpleasant taste. If the coffee is over extracted or over brewed, then this leads to the overly bitter taste that can commonly occur. This is due to the fact that the bitter compounds are still being extracted after the taste has already been balanced by the final stages of brewing.